Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome back. Uh, in this video, uh, we're going to capture a packet and we're going to look at that particular packet. And that packet is specifically going to be focused on SSL traffic. So a website, any website that you visit that has a lock uh, uh, in front of it, which means it's secure, you can put your information all the communication that is taking place between client and a server which means you and some e-commerce website or any other website is actually being encrypted so we're going to look at that particular we're going to try to capture the packet using wireshark and we're going to look at the entities in in those packets i know the basic structure of uh, tls or ssl handshake it actually consists of first a client hello then server hello, then change cipher suit, and then server key exchange and client key exchange, and then application data. This is a basic format. So the first packet in a handshake, TLS handshake or SSL handshake is actually consist of client, hello, server hello, and so on. So what we're gonna do, I have my Wireshark which is running. I'm gonna start my packet capturing using this and start capturing the packets and I'm just gonna simply go to a website any website you can just click and go to any website you want while this website is running on my left hand side this is capturing the packets I'm gonna stop my packet here I think it has captured enough packets and then I'm gonna apply my filter the filter for SSL handshake is actually known as TLS I'm just gonna simply type in while all the packets which were being received by network interface card, my wireless card on my laptop, the, I would see all of it. All the packets are coming in. By applying a filter of TLS, I will only see packets which are based on TLS. So by looking at the packet structure of my packets, I immediately saw that because I have different browsers, I mean different tabs were on, but in this particular tab, so as soon as I went to that website, this website has a lock, as you can see, which means it's a secure website. It's a secure e-commerce website. I would see the first packet that I intended to see, which is actually a client hello. And I'm seeing this right now, right here. This is that first hello. Why not this hello? Why this? Because as you can see, the packet length is almost the same thing. And it is being initiated by my router, by my laptop. And let's look at the IP address of my lap, I mean my computer. So if I were to look at an IP address of my computer, I would know it is 192.168.1.107. So indeed, this is the one that is initiating that connection. So this is that first packet. I have a structure client hello that is going to this particular destination which is 20.114.189.135 and so on and 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 then you have a server server hello then you have some other packets so let's look at those packets i think i don't need to let me just uh, close this window and let me just go to this watch short okay now i can clearly see i have a client hello i have a server hello that's the packet then i have sir uh, i have another packet that is coming in from my server uh, from my server which is actually the website to me that has certificate server key exchange server hello done then i am sending myself a client key exchange change cipher specs encrypted handshake message and then finally my message is being encrypted and all of my application data is coming. So the first packet that I want to look at uh, is client hello. And I want to see what's inside of these uh, of this particular packet. So as you can see, this is TLS. So I would just simply go here. And as you know, this packet is using transmission control protocol, which is actually a reliable protocol as compared to UDP. Uh, when I go here, the thing that I'm interested in, first of all, I'm interested in the version of what TLS is using. It has to be the same version. So based on this version, you can also distinguish because there are some other packets which might have different versions. Like, for example, this one. This one is 1.3. That's that's not for me. This is, this is the handshake that I'm interested in. So this is that client hello that has a version of 1.2, so which is good. So this is a set. So all one two three four these are set of four 
uh, in a TLS ha handshake. These are the four things that I should see together to see this is the actual package that I should look for. Client hello, server hello, and certificate and client a key exchange and then after that application data where your data is coming as encrypted data all right so in this client hello what is the thing that you need to focus there are a lot of different information which is there uh, I am first of all I need to know what is the version of my TLS so that is 1.2 that is also given here and um, the other thing is random this is sort of like a random key sort of like a nonce based on that you would generate your public key uh, either on client side or either on server side. This is just a nonce, all right? And the other thing that you should focus on is actually cipher suit. And now what these cipher suits are, actually what cryptography provides is actually confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. So uh, a complete encrypted uh, connection is actually based on uh, uh, confidentiality, which is provided by your uh, algorithms, cryptographic algorithms, generally it's actually your uh, AES, which is the most common denominator when it comes to symmetric crypto cryptography. Second, you need to provide integrity of my message. Integrity can be done using hash functions. You can clearly see it's a combination of all three. And then you would have uh, uh, authentication can be done uh, via uh, RSA uh, because in RSA you can use public and private key to actually perform authentication so in client hello you would see all of these cipher suit that this these so what client is offering now is that these are the suits which are available that will provide you with confidentiality integrity authentication out of this server will decide which one of these suits server would choose to communicate with client so as you can just look at it closely a it's using AES-128. So AES is a symmetric key cryptography algorithm. GCM is a method of using AES. SHA-256 is the one that is providing you with, uh, uh, with integrity because it actually hashes your message. And same thing, uh, ChaCha-20 and Poly-1305. If you, if you, if you, as you know, AES is a block algorithm, while ChaCha20 is actually a stream algorithm, which is still an unbroken algorithm. AES takes a blocks of data and encrypts it, while ChaCha20 is actually another form of symmetric key cryptogra cryptographic algorithm that is actually based on stream. It actually encrypts one bit at a time. So that's a pretty good example. Uh, then you have um, uh, you have elliptic curve using Diffie-Hellman scheme with AES. Of course, AES, as you can clearly see, AES, AES. Okay, this was already a symmetric algorithm, ChaCha20, which is stream-based. So that's why AES is not there. But AES, 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 AES. This is another stream algorithm. This is another AES, 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 actually block symmetric key algorithm. So AES is the common denominator by while Diffie-Hellman and RSA are the schemes which is authenticating it while um, uh, uh, secure hash algorithms like SHA-256, 384, uh, these are just providing you with in integrity. I hope you understand this. So when you, when you go to your server hello, now server hello will definitely have a random key. Uh, this is sort of like a nonce. And out of those uh, 16 algorithm server has chosen this particular cipher suit to start to to establish communication with so if you remember it this is based on so it's using the Hellman R, RSA with AES 256 and this is just an scheme to use AES a symmetric key AES algorithm and SHA-384 this was actually in the list right here the Fielman AES-256, GCM, SHA-384. So out of those, it has chosen this particular algorithm to communicate with. Now, so this is the one, this is the request sent by to my server, which is this IP address. Server respond with its chosen cipher suit. Now, server will also respond with certificate. So this, this actually comprises of three different packets. Certificate, server key exchange, server hello done. So first it will provide you with a certificate. Okay, these are my certificate uh, because certification authority will have to sign it. 
so these are the certificates which are available so it has sent those certificates like for example this is digi certificate uh, this is some other type of a certificate which is actually signed by some type of a root ca or intermediate ca certification authority so first is this so these are your certificate and it might even have a status of your certificate as well some packet might have some status as well second you have a server key exchange method that is using ec diffie hellman these are some of the parameters and this is the public key what this public key is what this particular public key that you would see here is actually a a a pre-master key based on this public key you're gonna make another key based on that key so this is that this is not an actual public key based on this public key you're gonna generate a, a common key between a client and a server that's what that key is and after that you have server hello done okay we're done now client will also send a packet where you have a client key exchange it will also have a public key parameter in such client key exchange protocol you will also have that public key based on that public key uh, because it's based on Diffie Hellman. So if you if you don't if you forgot about Diffie Hellman, is that you both parties will have to choose a particular parameter. It's actually a good example of zero knowledge proof that you're not telling them your actual key, but based on some other parameter, you are calculating a a, 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 a symmetric key which you are exchanging with. I hope you're getting this point because since it's using Diffie Hellman scheme, all right. Ziffy Hellman is based on zero knowledge proof that you don't need to tell your actual key, but based on these public key that you guys all have selected at your end, you're gonna generate a session key. In in and Ziffy Hellman normally this is what happens. You will generate a session key without telling each party what is that particular key is. Um, so that is that key. And then of course, then you will have an encrypted handshake, then you will have a chain cipher uh, protocol. Uh, this is just some a message after that you will have your application data this is so now as soon as this packet is completed this encrypted handshake you would automatically see that lock in front of your website name so for example if that was amazon.com then the lock will appear after this and after that all the packages all the messages all the packets which are being sent between client and server they would come under a category of application data and all of that would be encrypted so so that's the basic idea how to actually capture packet using wireshark and what's inside of those packets i know there's a lot of other information which is there but these are the information th these are some of the main things that you should focus on so i hope you like this small tutorial on um, on wireshark and tls security and tls packets and if you have any questions uh, don't forget to leave it in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel